Hey and welcome back. I have an upcoming project that's going to require a big threaded bolt, something in the range of 30 to 40 mils in diameter. Now normally for a custom bolt, we could easily take care of it in the lathe, simply single point thread it in a few passes and be done with it. However, the pitch I'm looking to cut is going to be an issue. I think the biggest pitch I've ever done on this lathe is 1.5mm, so for every turn of the spindle, the carriage will advance 1.5mm forward. However, I was asking it to cut a 6mm Acme thread, and the lathe simply wasn't having any of it. First I stripped out the idler gear, which I had to replace. Then I bent the idler rocker, and then I had to replace that with a block of steel. I then stripped out three other gears trying to get it to work, which it did, but the threads simply looked, well, not that great. I think this will be one of the few times that the size of the lathe has defeated me. However, I'm not going to give up, though I will need a new approach. I eventually landed on the idea of cutting the thread with the milling machine by using helical milling. It would be a lot easier if I had a CNC machine, but I can definitely do it on the manual mill. The aim will be to connect the dividing head to the mill's lead screw, so that it rotates as I move the mill's table. At the far end, there's going to be a slot cut into the lead screw, and that is meant so that you can drive it from a power feed, but I'm willing to bet that we can use it to drive a small gear train. We'll start by making an insert that will allow us to connect the gear to the lead screw. To machine the other side, I'll swap over to the collet chuck. I'll then use the milling machine to mill in two flats. It now fits really well into the recess and will easily spin with the lead screw. Now the insert does need to be made captive, so what I'll do is I'll machine up a plate to go over the top of it. I'll start off by cleaning up an offcard of steel with the face mill. I'll then drill two holes, one of them for the insert to stick through, and another one for a stud that we can mount a set of gears on. Now the aim will be to mount this on the front of the bracket, so what I'll do is I'll make up some tabs. The tabs are screwed in place, and I can then weld the part up in situ. Next we need a way to connect the dividing head to the gear train. 
The spindle does have an 18mm bore and we should be able to make use of it. Now the design I settled with was an expanding mandrel which went through several design changes as I went along with the build. The end that I'm machining currently will go into the spindle bore, so in order to lock it in place, I'll have to cut a taper in the end. I'll then start to machine the other side. And finally, to allow it to expand, I'll cut several slits into the side. And with the compound still set up, I'll cut a matching cone. With it cleaned up, we can now see how the design works. A cap head screw will pull the cone into the taper and that will expand the mandrel so that it will lock into place. Now the step down here was initially intended for a supporting bracket but the design was a lot more rigid than expected, so it wasn't used. And to connect the gear to the mandrel, I'll feed through a shaft with the gear connected. And speaking of which, the design does call for two 45 teeth gears and two 90 teeth gears. And I'll have to make those from scratch since I don't have any on hand. However, making them was a lot easier since I already had the dividing head set up. And after getting everything properly set up, that is the final result. As you can probably tell, we have the 45 tooth gear connected to the table's lead screw. That connects to the 90 tooth gear, which is keyed to a 45 tooth gear, which connects to a 90 tooth gear. Now the result of all of that is a speed reduction of a quarter. So because the lead screw is a 2mm pitch, 
it means we should be able to cut an 8mm pitch helix. Speaking of which, let's see if we can actually make it work. And I know it's only plastic, but I'm pretty happy with the result. The helix looks great, although it will need a bit more rigidity before I can cut steel with it. But so far, I'm really happy with it. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.